Good morning, everybody. Are you all fit and well? Yeah, nice yeah. to see you again. We're going to look today at what's widely called small circle, large circle. If you Google that, small circle, big circle, you'll come up with hundreds of different sites ranging from the meaning of life, the worship of gods, and every application that you can think of in martial arts. It's a concept which has been with us for a great many years, but the understanding of it takes a really quite a long time. And it was in trying to get that understanding that I devised these exercises that we do where we're using left and right brain and getting each hand to work individually without having to think about it. So you're getting small circle, big circle, this sort of movement. But without centre, it's just waving your arms about. It has to be this silk reeling sort of movement. So you silk wheel here, you silk wheel here, or change it, so they're going in different directions. And the exercises, these, one up, one down, all of the dexterity exercises, are designed not only to get this movement in small circle, big circle, but also with the spiralling energy within the body. So we get this whipping through the middle of the body. So that when we do this, it's not this with the arm locked. It's a spiralling where the arms are completely loose. And it's only there that you can get the discus thrower, which is one of the most powerful strikes using the side of the hand as a contact point. But if you just do that, it's got nothing. Do that, and it doubles the power. Plus, it means you can train with constant breath, that you don't get exhausted, and that every movement you do is actually a qigong. Whether it's these sort of movements, they're all part of the qigong, to gather energy rather than waste it. Okay? So before we do anything at all, we have to warm up, warm our bodies, and allow the free flow of qi. The exercises begin, work within your own pace, know your body from this moment, whether you can do a full stretch, a medium stretch, or a small stretch and gradually listen to the muscles extending. As you twist bone, it's a, a crystalline structure and as a crystalline structure it will produce a, a small amount of electricity. That is natural in all animals. But it's designed to attract calcium into the bone. So that the more you use a bone, the bigger and stronger it gets. The sinews themselves, which attach the muscle to the bone, are also a partial crystalline structure in the same way. And when they are stretched, as in muscle tendon changing qigong, this screwing of the energy and the tightening, in isometrics, tighten, release, tighten, release, you get the same sort of electrical charge being built up in the tendon, but not necessarily in the muscle. The muscle uses energy. <laughs> All right? So when you're working with these exercises, think in terms of extending. As the tendons go into the bone, the bone is porous and the tendons feed in like the roots of a tree. Everything follows a natural principle. If you take a bunch of grapes and take the grapes off it, you've got virtually the alveoli of the lung. If you look at the tree roots, you get this network, which is every part, every tension of the tree is distributed through every part of the root. 
So when we exercise our Qigong and root, we let the energy go down into the earth. Doesn't matter if you're standing on a floor like this, a carpet or whatever, the energy will pass right through. It is the concept of energy. People sometimes ask me, what should I be thinking? And it depends really what you're doing. Qi is all things. It's one energy. And all things are a manifestation of it. And it works, if you like, on the chaos theory. Everything is possible when you think about it and the Qi coalesces into an action. If I want to put my arm out, there is a microsecond of thought which generates that movement. You will sometimes find movements leaping across the spinal cord as a reflex, <laughs> this sort of movement, which doesn't go up to the brain. There's a trigger and the muscles work that side to that side through what's called a Golgi sensor network to balance when one muscle switches off, the other one switches on. But it's not a drop dead, it's a control and it's this control that we need to exercise so that you get this movement. And this is all of the Qigong that we do. All of this is controlled and tension, tension release, tension release. Okay? Right, the exercises. Start gently lifting. Release the hips and allow the gravity to take you down rather than trying to fight gravity. From here, just relax the muscle. Relax. Make sure the weight is spread evenly through the centre of the foot. Doesn't matter how wide the feet are apart, whatever is comfortable for you. But make sure your weight is centred and not doing this or this. Centre it. When you can then rest down. When you want to come up, don't look up. Look your head slightly down and roll up. You take the strain off the back, you can lift a lot more weight and you don't hurt yourself. Okay? Next exercise, stretching the muscles of the inner thigh. And they're attached to the pelvic girdle here, as are these, this triangle of very important muscle. And when you extend again, keep the foot flat on the floor. Doesn't matter if this heel has to rise a little bit. This way then you're strengthening the ankle as well. If you're doing that, you're losing half the exercise. Centre. 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 to press these acupuncture points here and you'll find that you'll release quite a lot of tension and you'll 
will distribute the weight more into the back muscles as well, so to balance all the muscles. And when you come then to turn, front leg upright, drop behind it, heel raised, turn one foot at a time, keep your balance, Dragon breath, gather the chi, and express. Try and get it all as lineable as you can. The front foot will have to turn in the back heel ways. And then to strengthen the muscle, just hold the posture. And move very, very slowly under controlled conditions. So you're gradually switching one muscle off as the other one switches on. The slower you do it, the more effective it is in working the mechanism in your brain that controls all of this in the pre-motor section. All right, how are your legs doing? <laughs> Good. Now, from here, we're going to hold this acupuncture point, press, press down, centre. Everything must be equal at this point. The weight on your feet, the angle, the head, slightly forward, so that the emphasis is pressure, pressure. Turn, corkscrew that energy, that there is tension. Change, palm up, palm down, press, palm up, palm down. Feel the tension, feel the flow through the meridians as you corkscrew this movement. Good. Whilst we're here, project. Again, tension, tension, release. Tension, release. Come on, you can go lower than that. <laughs> Project, so you're getting this sideways movement and that very small movement in the hip. So you're already starting to get this controlled pivoting at the center of the body. So you're looking at a circle and a tangent. <coughs> Project. Keep it in your mind what you're actually doing 
and make that person do what you want. So if James is very strong, can't get in there to do that turn, therefore I come out. Find the weakness, both hands. Huh? They're very, very strong. Here, weak. Do you understand? No, okay, watch. <laughs> there, strong. I've put all the weight back into him by pressing there. What's his natural reaction? To press forward. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It's so easy if you leave all the power here in this person and don't try and... This is small circle. Here. Here's big circle. You understand? We'll have practice in a while, but look for the weakness. Both hands as strong as you can. Smack. <laughs> <laughs> if it don't work one way, do it another. There is an expression in Aikido, no movement, no Aikido. There is. There is movement. And you can see him already moving. <laughs> and he knows where he's going because the pressure is coming out there. And where's he gonna go? All right. <laughs> it's taking the pressure. There's one small circle. There's a big circle. All right, got it. So as we go on with the exercises, think in terms of this. The Fibonacci is a succession of numbers which controls the rates of growth of plants, crystals, all sorts of things. It's 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3. It converts in the Pythagorean concept of the golden circle from no thing. It doubles each time. So from no thing, here, watch my finger, I'm going to come round and up, and that converts into his movement, small, ever increasing, exponential increase, got it? Right, okay, <laughs> thank you. Let's get on with the exercises. Um, when we come to do the balancing, here, stretch, 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 stretch. Work the muscle. Extend the muscle. Stretch, 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 stretch. Work the muscle. And just give the knees a little bit of a working. Only do small circles to start with. The small circles will squeeze the meniscus, the membrane between the upper and lower part of the leg, and it will cause a hydraulic effect that replenishes the fluid. But if you do the circle too big, it doesn't. If you want more lubricant in there, small circles. And then, as your ligaments get stronger, you can do bigger circles, you can do corners, you can do hyperextension, but not until your muscles and tendons are capable of it. So you can do a lot of damage hyperextending. But if you get into this training, 
of extension and hyperextension, then you will extend your range of movement and safe movement. Okay? Next exercise, raise the knee, raise the knee, toes pointing down. Raise the knee, raise the knee. So you're using the internal muscles. So that's the iliacus. Come from there to there. They join in there. And they join here. Be conscious of those muscles and develop them. So you get your knee right up high. Think of opening the chi channels, opening the joints, releasing obstruction. And then lift with the knees aligned and wait for the cramp. And then extend. And then, when you've got that, single leg lifts, both sides. Don't worry if you lose your balance. It's all about learning where to place your feet, basically. If you place your feet pointing out and turn the body, it's much more difficult to keep your balance because you're actually approaching your weak centre. Turn the toes slightly in or turn your body so that the attitude is here and then you can lift quite easily. You're training your mind and your body to coordinate and have known positions which are safe. Okay? Now to train the big muscles down the outside of the leg, toes pointing forward, iliotibial tract. Hold it out there and try to do it without moving the top of your body. All you do is shift your balance from the inside to the outside of your foot that's on the ground. Right. Now, Achilles stretches. Foot straight, front foot turned in. Stretch, really stretch. And as you come back, don't just let it switch off. Come back into these. And you teach your brain always to be aware The difference between readiness and paranoia. This is readiness, where the brain is switched on but calm. And then you can practice to get there, turning. Twisting, spiraling. Use the power of the palm. Use this Lao Gong point, the direction of the chi, and eventually it comes through the fingers.
<laughs> okay, that's good. Right. Now, the legs, you will see this movement in hundreds and hundreds of different forms. It's with the knee to the outside of the resting ankle. And it's a posture that you must develop if you are to do advanced qigong, tai chi sword, or any of the arts that go beyond what I'm teaching you today. Okay, down you go. Resting stance. This is one of my two sisters. This is Grace. This is Panache. <laughs> okay. Work on that to the point where you can almost uh, sit and have a cup of tea balanced on your knee while you're eating your dinner. There should be no movement from it and eventually you'll get to be able to lay the foot out and sit the bum on your heel. Right, but it takes practice. You won't get there in five minutes. When we start to look at these corkscrewing, we can extend the corkscrew into this, which again is another one to be found in quite a lot of Qigong. So you go right the way down as a spiral. Think in terms of the spiral. Right? The spiral then will be inside the rib cage, inside the torso. It's a larger spiral than the spiral through the centre of the chakra line. And you can get to it by doing this and then just continuing it down. All right, off you go. Think in terms of the, the spiral rather than how to get there. Let the spiral do it. Now, Okay, have a little shake before we do the next set. Make sure you're nice and loose. <laughs> okay. Dance. <laughs> okay. Now, feet almost dead parallel, slightly turned out. Think the posture, think in terms of the Cheeto symbol, that triangle, that cone of energy is locked. Grip the toes into the ground, turn the feet so that there's a slight emphasis curve in the power into the ground and then turn the top of the body without moving the hip at all. This is an exercise of locking 
rooting center into the ground. If you like to feel the tendrils of your roots going right through, absolute solid base. And press, press, press. Tension, release. Tension, release. So you're winding this spiraling energy within the body. Think in terms of the chi running down the legs and then back up again. Adam, can I go in for a second? Let's see how far you've progressed in this. Press as much as you can, hard as you can. You're letting the hips go around. Lock the hips, just turn the top of the body. That's better. More pressure. More, more, more. No, you turn the hip. Come back. Don't use the hip. Use the top of the body. That is a strong base. Oh, that's better. By Jove, I think you've got it. All right, other side. More pressure. As soon as you lose the, use the hip, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use the hip, that remains solid. Good, well done. Circle, tangent, cord across, diameter across the middle. Think in terms of the geometry. The geometry is there, it's universal. Pythagoras was famously quoted as saying that God is a geometrician. Yeah, everything works in geometry, trigonometry. And that's the basis of these exercises in Qi is using the natural energy, whether it be chi or the physics of the movement. Okay, now when you come to this solid part, now think in terms of two contra-rotating flywheels, one going that way, one going that way. And as you drop onto one, so the body moves. As you drop onto the other, the body moves. But get that concept of spiraling opposite directions in the middle and move. From the center, from no thing, whip the energy. Okay, then from there, discus. From here, through. Look again at the standard postures. Full balance, full control, but the hand is a projection, it whips out, it whips. Stopping halfway round. Let the whole body move 
and the arm comes completely free. If I see it up there, I know you're doing it wrong. <laughs> because it won't stay up there if there's no muscle in it. Fling it. Fling it. <laughs> Fling the frisbee. <laughs> 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 Right, right. If you want to be really nasty, you take the hand, hit the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> There's turning from centre. You alright with that? Yep. That was half speed. Okay. doesn't actually exist. What exists is the technique and the whip. It's like this. Whip. <laughs> the whole body becomes the whip. The energy travels here. The energy travels <laughs> there. <laughs> I had to stop that one. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been pivoting at that point. With all these exercises, they are very, very dangerous if applied because they are uninhibited. And what you have to learn is how to whoa, and stop at that moment of contact. Because otherwise, you'll kill people. If you do this, you will crush the trachea, you will rupture the carotid artery. Don't do it. As soon as you touch someone, you must have in mind that you do not hurt them. Now I can use this power without hurting him. Right? So the fudge comes in. Whoa! Down. You see I controlled him all the way down. My arm, his arms were sliding through mine. One, two, three. There's the point that I control him to stop him hitting his head. I slow his descent. Got it? Always. Look at the nerves. He knows, he knows what could happen. <laughs> yeah? Calm, 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 calm. Right. Until you've been on the receiving end of these, you really don't know what they feel like. <laughs> All right. And that moment where the body says, I'm going to die. Because the brain hasn't yet connected what's happening to it. These sort of punches here, where you're using it, bom, 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 bom. yes, the brain's got time to understand. But where you just straight down, there's no time, it takes a fifth of a second. And in that time, I can put him on the floor and his brain will not remember it. Right? <laughs> and that you can only get with this freedom of movement. Okay? Now, circle the waist and lift the pubic bone and tighten the stomach muscles as you come round to lift, 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 lift the other direction. So the hip is doing that. This People misinterpret, tuck the bum under, and they try and do this. No, you can't move. It's this rotation which allows you to drop in a natural movement. But exactly where that is will be different for every one of you. 
But when you're coming round here, tighten these muscles, the abdominal erector muscle. Feel this qua, this three points of energy here, and strengthen. Really lift, lift, and you're rotating the hip, freeing this. In order for that to work, these muscles have to adjust. And if you do it slowly, then you're again building this mechanism. And then reverse it, and then do it in that direction. So you're building a repertoire of coordinated muscle movement. The brain is a simple go-no-go -go analog computer with a set of patterns in it. It can't actually think. But what it can do is say, have I done this before and what did I do last time? And you have to build up a repertoire of about 6,000 movements in order to be able to pick out the few that you need at that moment. All right, so we've done the hips, we've done the stomach, breathing, abdominal, chest only, chest and abdomen together, bellows breathing, lock it at the front, breathe in, allow the diaphragm to come down, fill this way and this way. So you build a solid pad at the front. Okay, James, would you be to do the honours? Oh, thank you very much. That's no effort. It's because the muscles are trained to split the energy when they're hit. The energy doesn't go straight into me. It comes up and down the length of the muscle. And this is when you're hit. Don't be afraid of being hit. Use the energy. All right? This is a different thing to let it go by. If he hits me, and I let it go by, that's one thing. If I use the energy here, <coughs> I can just absorb it. Or I can just block it. <laughs> <laughs> nice wall. <laughs> Brick wall. Okay? It doesn't matter. And you can take back fist. Thank you very much. Oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> All right. I can use that energy. Because I have no fear of it. Because I've been hit so many times, I can use that energy. That is, to me, is as invigorating as doing half hour Qigong. Because his energy has gone straight into me. Oh, oh. And the harder he hits me, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't show you the release, otherwise you go through the floor. <laughs> or maybe I'll show you a little bit of the release. Hit. <laughs> Build it up, let it go. Alright? Now that, I gave him back about a tenth of what he gave me. You understand what I'm talking about? Don't be afraid of being hit. And when you're doing these exercises, aim for the chakra points and acupuncture points. so that you invigorate and circulate the chi. Right? There are certain points all the way down here, as you know, crown, third eye, throat, heart, stomach, the sacral chakra and base chakra. I wouldn't suggest hitting your base chakra too hard, but you can hit it here. <laughs> all right? So when you're doing this, look at heart, lung, meridian, 
stimulate by flow. As you stimulate here, it flows up and down the arm. Heart, lung, meridian. And then you do it on the legs. Liver, kidney, small, gallbladder, stomach meridian. Stomach meridian comes from the eyes down here, all the way down the leg into the toe. So all of this work in the stomach meridian. Energize. The body will tend to balance anyway. find if, if one organ is overstimulated or out of balance with the others, as you do this sort of regulation, tapping, you, the energy itself will dissipate from the over-tuned to the lesser-tuned and you will get a balance in the body throughout. So all of these, whether you stimulate spleen, liver, stomach, heart, lungs, Legs, right, small intestine, large intestine, bladder. Think in terms of each of the organs and give it energy. This energy is love. Love yourself. It's that pure energy, the one energy, the one word that gave rise to all existence. Eternal love. And bring it into your body with this gentleness. And then... let it spread all the way through your body. Right, we're going to take a couple of minutes like that. Just let the energy spread and dissipate all through your body before we do the next set of exercises. Right, so stimulate and then just rest. Gather to Dantian. This Dantian is the electrical storehouse of the body. If you charge there, then it just it's like the main <laughs> the the electric the LEB. You know, anyone can tap into it. Right? Any part of your body can tap into it. Store it there. Whether you think of it as yang or yin, or yang feeding yin, yin feeding yang, it doesn't matter. The physiology of it is the same. Take the energy. Think in terms of like the starburst 
the Cheeto symbol. This starburst here, that energy spreading all the way out. Okay, good. Oh, a little loose, and then shoulders. Leave the arms completely loose. Don't work the shoulder joint, just work the shoulder blade. And then do one, then the other, forward, back, one forward, one back. Right. So you get one going one way, one going the other. One forward, one back, and then both forward, and then both back, and then reverse it. You keep breaking up the pattern, then the brain has more patterns to use. Thus it learns to coordinate your rhomboid muscles, your subscapularis, all of the muscles of the shoulder. There are 27 muscles involved in the shoulder alone. Okay? Now, arms. Watch this spiraling. Tension, release, spiral the energy, but allow the body to come down, rising through. This is in Egyptian magic, the rising of the lotus each morning to greet the day. But look at the twisting, all the fingers, the thumbs, the wrists. Everything is twisting to generate that wonderful electricity from compressing and releasing cellular structure. Breathe in. Out. No breath. Skin breathing. Use the whole body. Down. Up. Think of the spirals in the body working their way up now, working their way through the arms. Think, extend that whole thing. You've seen it was Star Trek, haven't you, with the wing, the energy coming up. Ow, everything is here. Here is the Cheeto symbol. Moment of resting, of peace, of self healing. And through doing your chicken wings, and then do chicken wings independently. One, two, three, four, and then bring them down. Right? Circle the energy, point the fingers, point the fingers down. So you're doing this twisting in the other direction now. Everything. <laughs> Don't go disco dancing with this one. Though. <laughs> Clubbing. Oh, a bit old for that. <laughs> I've done these exercises all my life. I put them into a system in 95, we developed them again in 99, revised them in the light of rehabilitation exercises, but I've done these exercises since about 1958 when I first started Qigong at the age of 18. And all of these turning, even in the karate that I've done, right? this twisting, twisting, twisting energy is there. Okay. And certainly in the Aikido. 
turning. Everything turns. Okay. Use that twist. It's in so many different arts. Twisting, turning to generate power, generate energy. Dexterity, the one way to keep the brain really alive. One finger at a time. One finger at a time. <laughs> that way? That way. You're still having trouble with that one. <laughs> it's easy. It's that. One, two. Doesn't matter which way around you put it. You can do it that way, but then you have to cross the fingers over. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> Come on, you should have this by now. But <laughs> hey? right, there to there. You can only go that direction. Mm -hmm. There to there, you can only go that direction. Um. Oh! <laughs> no, that's a secret. Turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Now, neck. The neck doesn't sit on a peg. It sits on a saddle joint, like this. So when you want to move your head, don't just do this, which locks all the muscles up. Allow the chin to come slightly forward and the head back. Chin sliding back. So as you get this movement of the occipital bone over the atlas vertebra. Sliding, gliding. It's only a very limited amount of movement. If you move it too far, you break the odontoid peg and you've got trouble. If you don't exercise it, the head comes down on top of the odontoid peg and causes the most incredible pain because it's not meant to do that. Sliding, gliding. Then you can drop to release the muscles in the back of the neck and let it go back, but don't go back too far. Always listen to your body and only do what you know is safe. Don't force it. Just allow the muscles to extend. And when you turn to the side, again, allow each of the vertebra, there are seven cervical vertebra, Allow each one to take a seventh of the movement. Not eh, eh, eh. Let, them, let each one take the movement and slide round on its own disc. And allow all the muscles, the little tiny muscles in between the neck vertebra, allow them to relax. It's like the water element, allow it. Then rotate one direction, once in each direction. By now it should be moving without crunching. Because you will have worked all of the surplus, tis, surplus fluid out of the joints. It's that fluid in the joints which does the cracking. And it's not a good idea to crack your neck deliberately. Or your fingers. Or someone else's. 
<laughs> In physics, there's what's called cavitation, where if you suddenly decompress a fluid, the air bubbles form in it, and when you, as the fluid then recompresses, the air bubbles pop. And most of the time when you crack your neck, that's what you can hear, is this mechanical popping of the, of the air bubbles in your neck. And you, it, it's really not a good idea. You should free it and allow the, fluid, the surplus fluid out before you start really trying to do any exercise on the neck. Because that cracking ain't good. The secret is slow. Do it very slowly and allow it to happen. Okay? Good. Now, up, out, down. Again. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Release. Skin breathe in. Breathe out. Round. Okay. And then turn the body. Rotate. Now you're really working the lumbar yet again all of the joints of the body to make sure you've got them all very very loose very pliable and that you can move freely and from the top rainbow dance so many versions of rainbow dance depending on what you want to do with the chi here we're doing longevity qigong, passing the energy through the pituitary gland. A great rainbow of energy. Think in terms of a full rainbow, all of the colours here. Blue inside, progressing through, yellow, brown, yellow out to the orange and the red and you're describing those beautiful colours here, bringing them through. Try and think in terms of a full rainbow, everything in front of you here. And become part of it. Colour therapy for the organs of the body does tend to follow the colours of the rainbow because they are natural. Some people like to think in terms of each organ having its own colour. Colour is a vibration. All things are in vibration. If you think of a rainbow and become part of the rainbow, then you're getting all of the vibrations of all of the organs into the body. And by this progression through from the physical to the internal, now you're getting the full benefit of the Neigung the internal energy that you're building. You can think in terms of circulating the energy in the body, up one way, down the other. There are three pathways in front of the spine. And they circulate here and here. And they complement each other. Water, air, fire. If you like to think of it in those terms, depends what school you go to but balance them. So you're balancing this way with the rainbow, you're balancing this way with the internal qigong, and you're allowing free flow of qi. Everything is allow. Allow it to happen. Just be. The petal is perfect. It doesn't try to be what it is not. So every petal is perfect. It has no consciousness of trying to be something else. It just is. You know the classic Japanese tales of the peach blossom. It's perfection. You spend all your life looking for the perfect petal. 
and on your death you realize that every petal is perfect because it doesn't apply the human concepts of trying to be what it is not. You're part of this one energy, the whole chi. Now, the next set of exercises is to do with small circle and in Chido keep our toes down, in Tai Chi keep your toes up most of the time. Small circle, yield, conserve, press, yield, conserve, press. So you see it's this circle and at the end of the circle we're just doing a little bit of a teardrop to get that pressure. So from here, there's the maximum, then it condenses. It pressures right through the middle. Small circle. Coordinate every part of your body to that point here and don't overreach. If you need to move forward, move your foot. Don't lose your strength position. If you overreach, I'll put you on the floor in a split second. You only overreach when you want to lead the attacker to doing something. You offer him a target. Or her. Smaller circles first. Small, really small. Okay. And think in terms of this energy, all of the energy of all the universe coming into that press. Gather everything from all around you. Can you move back a little bit? I have your hand coming on the side of the screen there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, small circle. Can I borrow your car for a second? Right. Just cross, cross your hands over there. That's it. Catch him, Paul. Mm -hmm. Small circle. <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Paul. I had faith. I right. Come here, I come. Knew that was right. <laughs> cross your hands over. One finger. One finger, small circle. Okay. Got it? I've gathered all of the universe into that one point. This is what you've been working towards. It's bringing the whole of the world into you. Becoming one with it. Now I can throw you with one finger hardly touching it, because all of the geometry is there, the posture is there, the energy is there. It's not purely projection of chi, it is application of chi. Right? We've all seen people blowing candles out with their, you know, from a foot away and things of that nature, or setting fires, they're all over the YouTube. This is application in a practical sense. We have to live in this world. 
The next circle is to do with this triangle and the, the rotation of energy here. So it's a bigger circle, it's gathering there, the, the elbows just, you fill this area with chi to that point. James has learned to ground. You better come away from that wall. <laughs> Well, James has learned to soften his shoulders. There he's learned how to absorb the energy. Right? Then he's learning how to keep his centre around here. Right? So he is learning all of these ways in which I can move him and he can absorb the energy. Right. That's why he's a higher grade. Okay, so we've got James with his soft shoulders absorbing how to move, how to take one movement and then another, how to get his center to move even though he's now I've got him going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come here. This small circle transmits or transmutes into literally put your mind into it. Once I get him going, even one inch, then allow the chip. I've done all of the universe into me. <laughs> And that's all I use. Okay? Now, we do it with all of the universe, all of the energy, all of the earth energy coming up through my feet, and we just use one finger. Okay? This isn't the one inch punch which comes there and it's quite destructive. This is projection where I've done all of the exercises that we've done and I just come up and in one finger that's all it takes now if I do that with one finger you imagine the power here it will shatter it will shatter do so much damage Control, control, Sah! control, all the time. If I get that wrong, he dies. Be careful. Sah! That touch. Okay? Now he knows I'm not going to hurt him. You start doing that to someone who is less well trained in the street, and you don't have to hurt him. Because if they put the punch into your face, boom, that's it, <coughs> bye bye. <coughs> that's enough. The shock of it is enough. All right, now, the big circle is this for extending and moving chi all the way. Here is the big circle. Gather, gather, spread the energy all through your body. Use this as a postural exercise. The weight moves from 70%, 70, 80%. The foot can come off the ground. You're doing single leg lifts. This is posture, but it's also movement. It's also this movement. Okay? Big circle and then when the big circle is done, the Qigong. Kuo 
grain rising. Down, circle, chi spreads to your flight feathers. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Step, down. This is a wonderful exercise for regulating the adrenaline and teaching you how to control your kidney energy. I use it for treating people with panic attacks. I teach them this Qigong. Lift. Lift. Off we go, a couple of minutes please. Big circle and then crane rise. Okay, crane rising, lift the body, lift the mind, lift the spirit, lift. Allow the flight feathers to work, free the chi. Chi flows from the centre. Now, remember the starburst of chi. From the heart chakra, from the stomach, from the sacral chakra. That beautiful yang and yin energy. Flowing through all the meridians. Complete freedom. Stomach in, chest up, raise the head and then close the palms to centre. There should be no movement except your breath and your heartbeat. Thank you. Honour and a privilege, as always. Next, in, this ne in the next video, we'll be looking at the applications of the Cheeto animal form. All of the cobra, mantis, and so forth. Alright? Another masterclass.
next week. Thank you all.